the previous class we started with uh, stability analysis right so stability analysis itself is a very big topic and uh, i mean within such a short uh, span of time we cannot be able to ever able uh, to cover everything but i'm trying to give you uh, an idea of um, what do we actually mean by this uh, stability of the solution and uh, in the previous class we saw that uh, stability um, of uh, equilibrium points, uh, how to determine them. Uh, we calculated um, uh, one or two examples, or we, we saw one or two examples where we calculated the uh, stability of the equilibrium points, right? And um, uh, we also wrote down those uh, system of equations, two by two systems uh, in terms of uh, matrix equation and uh, from there we did, sort of did the analysis. We'll continue our discussion in this uh, chapter also. So, uh, as I said, um, this uh, limiting behavior actually of the uh, solution, that means when t tends to infinity, what happens to the solution, that uh, that is being discussed, uh, I mean, not only for uh, ordinary differential equations, but also for partial differential equations. Um, good thing is here we are not covering partial differential equations. So, we are only concentrated uh, on uh, ordinary differential equations. And uh, that kind of uh, gives uh, rise to uh, terminology such as uh, stability or uh, Lyapunov stability, asymptotic stability. And uh, sometimes when it is neither, then uh, it leads to something called chaotic behavior. So we also have a little, a small chapter dedicated to the chaos theory or chaotic behavior of the ODEs. Um, of course, that topic is also very vast, but uh, we'll cover some important parts of it. So we'll continue the stability discussion in this chapter and maybe probably for next uh, two or three chapters more before we actually look into the chaotic behavior. So let us uh, delve into the discussion, right? So basically, uh, we have this initial value problem, right? Dx dt, uh, dx dt equals to f of x t. Um, I'm writing the scalar version of it and x at t0 is equals to x0. Let us call it as equation number 1. So, we want to know or we want to study, we wish, this is what we are trying to do. We wish to study um, the behavior of the solution, the behavior of the solution. Sometimes I also write wrong spelling so you can correct yourself. Uh, behavior of the solution x t as t tends to infinity. So, this is what we are trying to learn or study that what happens when uh, t tends to infinity to the solution x t, right. So, these are basically uh, something called long term behavior of the solution. We want to see how it behaves in the long term. And uh, from there, we, as I said, we we will come across uh, the stability or Lyapunov stability, uh, stable uh, solution, or sometimes also called as Lyapunov stable uh, solution. Then we will define uh, um, uh, un asymptotic asymp asymptotic stable solution or asymptotically stable solution, stable solution and then there is something called chaos or chaotic behavior, right. And when neither is happening, I mean when then, then it leads to sort of like uh, unstable solution, unstable solution and um, we will see uh, basically from here to here is the interesting case. If the solution becomes unstable, then we leave it there. It is no longer interesting for us. So, mostly when the solution is stable uh, or we want we want to know whether it is stable or not, that is when we are doing the t tends to infinity. As long as it becomes unstable, then we leave it like that because then it is no longer interesting for us. Now, if you remember uh, last class up until last class discussion, um, we had this equation number 1 subjected to this uh, initial condition and uh, say and let x t be its solution, be its solution, right. So, basically what we did, um, first of all, what we did, we disturbed this uh, ODE and uh, by disturbance, we mean that uh, we perturbed it. Perturb means uh, you make something. 
So, we mixed um, something into the initial condition, something into the right hand side, right? Or you can do one at a time, or you can do the disturbance in both of them, you can do the perturbation in both of them, and uh, then um, we uh, got the perturb problem. Uh, the perturb problem was something like this the perturb problem was only oh, no, not was <laughs> it should be is it was like that but uh, is uh, suppose we have uh, y dash uh, or dy dt if you wish to write uh, f of ty plus r ty we perturb the right hand side and uh, we also perturb the initial condition y t1 is equals to x t1 plus z1 right this is what we obtain let us call it as system 2. So, of course, its solution is the solution to system 2 is y the solution to system 2 is y. And stability considerations now deal with the behavior of the difference of y t minus x t as a function of time t. So, here um, if we actually do the stability analysis for system 1 and 2, then basically here stability analysis, stability analysis uh, or stability considerations, considerations now deal with the behavior behavior of the difference of the solution difference difference y t minus x t right as a function of time. So, here basically um, we were able to approximate this difference and we saw that uh, it uh, grows exponentially. So, as t tends to infinity whether they are sort of converging uh, or I mean if they are starting from the same initial point then whether they are uh, as t tends to infinity remains uh, or converging to the same uh, trajectory or whether they are converging or diverging um, that can be checked uh, by doing this t tends to infinity. We also obtained uh, one estimate where we had norm of y t minus x t uh, is less than or equal to we had e to the power capital L t minus t 0 plus uh, into norm of y 0 minus x 0 plus some term involving the Lipschitz constant. So, we were able to establish an estimate for the difference and here uh, one form of the stability analysis would be to what happens to this difference when t tends to infinity. So, we want to see the long term behavior of both the solutions. Um, the second one is in fact the perturbed uh, solution of the original system 1. And we want to see as t tends to infinity uh, whether uh, they, they sort of maintain the same trajectory or they diverge, uh, whatever behavior they possess. So, here stability analysis can be uh, formulated in that fashion, right. So, just like that, um, whenever you have a certain system, uh, you find out the solution, and uh, basically doing t tends to infinity, or if you're perturbing the right hand side or left hand side or whatever tweaking you are doing into your equation, um, the solution is going to depend on it, right. And uh, after that, if uh, you study the long term behavior, if um, it is not growing up, if it remains finite, then you call it as a stable solution. Uh, if it sort of tends to infinity or uh, does not converge, then basically you call it unstable solution and there are certain situations when we call it as a uh, chaos system. So, let us give some definitions before we actually uh, get into uh, some major results. So, the first uh, definition is this which is about simply um, total stability, total stability, maybe I can call it definition 1, stability, total stability. The solution x t, the solution x t of system 1 is called totally stable, is called 
totally stable if for each epsilon positive if for each epsilon positive epsilon is an uh, arbitrary chosen a uh, small positive number so for each arbitrary small uh, positive number epsilon and for each t1 uh, get rho equal to t0 uh, there exist there exist a delta neighborhood a delta neighborhood uh, delta of epsilon t1 delta neighborhood delta of epsilon t1 such that such that uh, norm of yt uh, minus xt uh, is less than epsilon for all t get rho equal to t1 whenever we have whenever norm of z is less than this delta epsilon neighborhood of t1 and uh, capital R uh, 1 is less than delta epsilon t1 where capital R is basically supremum over all t get rho equal to t1 norm of t comma x right here you might put a bar here if we uh, visualize everything in terms of uh, vector equation. Uh, just for the sake of the analysis bar bar right so basically um, here delta uh, does not depend on t1 the solution uh, x of 1.1 is called uh, if delta does not depend on t1 the solution x of 1.1 uh, is called uniform st uniformly stable that means uh, if delta uh, does not uh, depend on T1, the solution X of 1 is called uniformly, uniformly stable. So, if you can think of it, this is more like a uniform continuity definition. That means, when delta stops stops depending upon those uh, x and y's, then uh, basically we call it uh, uh, uniformly continuous. So, here uh, this, part uh, this particular definition, total stability, uh, is actually telling us that uh, you have the perturb system, you have the original system, you take the difference. If it is less than epsilon, that means any arbitrary small chosen number, uh, such that this uh, z uh, basically. Uh, which is uh, yt minus xt, right? We have substituted that t is equals to yt minus xt is less than that delta, and uh, r1 is basically the supremum of all the right hand sides. So, basically, if uh, you consider a small neighborhood around the point xt, then the solution uh, yt, which is basically the perturbed solution, remains in that neighborhood. Right? So, that means uh, this is uh, sort of giving us uh, the stability of the solution that uh, the solution is not simply diverging uh, to some infinite value um, or to some other trajectory. So, this is kind of like uh, the, it is uh, staying in that neighborhood that means the difference can be made very arbitrary small and this is like a total stability or stability of the solution. If your delta, the delta which we are choosing, if it is independent of these uh, t1s, so that means if it is true for all uh, t greater equal to uh, t0 or greater equal to 0, then in that case it simply becomes uniformly stable. So, you can take any uh, this uh, uh, any uh, delta neighborhood and uh, that is basically uh, will cover all these uh, uh, trajectories which will always remain in the neighborhood of xt. So, this is what we call it uniformly stable and uh, uh, though useful in its own and in particular in view of numerical computation one often needs a stability concept that does not relate to perturbation of the vector field right. 
in the rest of this chapter we shall mainly um, look into the perturbation of the initial value and only come back to the concept of total stability uh, when required okay so basically um, now what we are interested to see is that uh, the basically uh, we want to see uh, the solution for solutions uh, xt of 1 as uh, t tends to infinity uh, t tends to infinity it may happen it may happen that um, x approaches approaches to a stationary point stationary point or equilibrium point uh, or, or is such a point itself or uh, is such a point itself um, x approaches to a periodic solution third possibility is x becomes unbounded unbounded or fourth possibility is x behaves otherwise that means it is neither behaves otherwise. So, this case when it is unbounded then it leads to uh, instable. So, it is not interesting at all. Once, once, once the solution becomes unbounded or instable there is no further point in studying it. That is the uh, in not so interesting uh, case. And um, in, in the following, uh, so uh, basically for us the interesting case will be that uh, when it is uh, reaching to a stationary point uh, or when it is uh, up, uh, reaching to a periodic solution or when it behaves otherwise. So, this is the case basically uh, where we can study the chaotic behavior right uh, or chaos system. So, that we will come back later on. Now, um, that we uh, learnt about at least uh, what do we uh, mean by when we are sort of uh, perturbing the right hand side, perturbing the initial condition and uh, coming up with a new system and when we are looking the solution, the yt of the second system in the neighborhood of xt, then how we uh, at least motivate the definition of uh, stability or total stability, right. So, the idea is that the new solution has to remain in the neighborhood of the uh, old solution that is xt. Now, let us continue our dis, uh, definition and statement uh, keeping these four points in mind right uh, that what happens to xt uh, when we just uh, put up the initial condition. Let us not put up the right hand side, let us keep the right hand side as it is. We just change the initial condition and we want to see what happens to the solution. So, the solution um, whether it will still remain stable, if it is stable then how we are defining the definition of stability in that case and uh, what happens to the solution, the long term behavior of the solution. So, uh, we will now look into the, uh, the, put, um, the perturbed and unperturbed OD. So, again uh, stability definitions. So, we have already given the definition 1, here we will give further more definitions. So, let us consider the system, let us consider the system 1 that is originally we have defined. Let us consider the system or consider the initial value problem better uh, the original one that means uh, dx bar by dt or d vector sign you can also give vector of x comma t and uh, x vector t uh, 0 is equals to x 0. Let us call it as system 1. and uh, then and then uh, and uh, not then and we introduce let us introduce and we introduce 
perturbed introduce uh, perturbed OD or initial value problem as uh, y dash or dy dt uh, f of ty and uh, y at t1 is equals to x at t1 plus z1 let us call it as equation number 2 right. So, we will go to the next phase. The solution, the solution of um, 1 is called Lyapunov. Lyapunov was a, one of the famous mathematician. Uh, Lyapunov or simply just stable. So, either you can it call you can call it um, Lyapunov stability or just stability. Uh, Lyapunov stable if the solution y of the equation 2 uh, remains remains in the uh, vicinity in the vicinity of x as t tends to infinity for all t1 and uh, all small and all small perturbations. I mean if your perturbation is really large then in that case it will definitely affect the stability, but if you are perturbing with a very small value um, then our y t will always remain in the vicinity of x t, but if you perturb with a very large value then it is some I mean probably it will um, uh, not be in the vicinity of uh, x t at all because you have put up the value with a really, I mean you have put up the initial condition with a really large value. So, you might end up getting a completely different solution. So, here the perturbation needs to be small also uh, for all small perturbations z at t 1. So, more formally, more formally we can define it like this, uh, sorry, uh, more formally we have another definition, definition 2 which says that uh, the solution, the solution x t of 1 is Lyapunov stable, Lyapunov stable if uh, for every epsilon positive or to each epsilon positive arbitrary small uh, and for every t1 and for every t1 get equal to t0 there exist a delta neighborhood a delta neighborhood nbd neighborhood which is denoted by delta t of F, t1 of epsilon um, such that such that uh, norm of y t minus x t is less than epsilon for all t greater equal to t 1 whenever uh, norm of uh, z 1 is less than delta epsilon uh, t1, z1 is the norm of y t minus uh, x t right. So, uh, let me just go back to the previous slide, uh, here it should be z1 sorry uh, norm of z, so this one also should be z1. I mean basically norm of z, even if it is z, norm of z that will be actually your z1 because uh, y t minus x t 
uh, is we can substitute z t. So, y 0 minus uh, x 0 uh, will be our z 0. So, that is z 1. So, it is better to write z 1 there. Uh, just to so when I wrote here, I remembered that I need to correct there, right. Okay. And uh, where y, uh, where y uh, t is a solution is a solution of uh, 2 of the system 2. So, very straightforward theorem, right. If you perturb the initial condition a little bit, what happens to the solution? That is the question we are asking that uh, change the initial condition. If, the, if you do not change the initial condition, there is nothing to uh, study actually there. But um, I mean, of course, there is a lot of things to study, but I am saying it is not so interesting. So, if you really want to study the any interesting things there, you just put up the initial condition a little bit and see whether the solution actually agreeing with the original solution or not. And uh, this definition tells us that the system 1 is, is called Ly Lyapunov stable. If uh, this y t, the perturbed solution, uh, still remains in the neighborhood of that x t, right? And uh, that uh, result or that uh, um, informal statement can be put into a formal uh, statement or a def definition, which is given like uh, like this one, right? For a stronger form, one requires delta and uh, this. So and uh, for uh, a stronger form of stability, stability one requires the uh, quantity delta, the quantity. Um, delta uh, not to depend, uh, delta not to depend on T1, right, on T1 and uh, this is the case, this is the case if uh, for, this is the case If for a given epsilon positive, delta epsilon is taken as infima over all T1 greater or equal to T0 uh, delta epsilon T1, right. So, basically you take the infimum of all such deltas and if your norm of Z1 is less than that delta, then your delta will become independent of T. 1 and uh, therefore, then it is called as more like a uniform layupon of stability. So, then this is uh, then x then in such cases in such case x is called um, uniformly 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 uh, formally Lyapunov stable solution, right. And uh, an even, this is interesting, an even, so, so far we are saying as uh, uh, as, as you are perturbing the initial condition, what happens to the solution, whether it is remaining in the neighborhood or not. Now, an, another stronger form of uh, stability would be to say that as t tends to infinity, this modified solution should converge to the actual solution. So, that is uh, a further stronger condition, a stronger form of stability that uh, not only it stays in the neighborhood, as a long term behavior, this y t will converge to x t. So, even uh, an even stronger, uh, an even stronger form 
of uh, stability requires the solution y uh, of, uh, uh, of 2 uh, not only to remain in the neighborhood of x, but also uh, to converse to it, to converse to it as t tends to infinity and this basically give, uh, gives rise to an another definition, definition 3 which is basically asymptotic uh, stability. So, the solution uh, x of 1 um, is asymptotically asymptotically stable if x is stable. So, first of all it has to become stable if x is stable or Lyapunov stable and if for each t greater uh, t1 greater equal to t0 uh, there exist uh, a delta neighborhood delta of t1 such that if for each t1 greater or equal to t0 there exist a delta neighborhood delta t1 such that uh, norm of y t minus x t uh, is less than epsilon as uh, uh, sorry it con is converges to 0 not epsilon it converges to uh, 0 as t tends to infinity whenever our z 1 is less than delta t 1 right. So, here basically we are addressing the point that uh, what happens to the solution as uh, the solution y t as we are actually looking at the long term behavior. So, we are no longer asking it to be staying in the same neighborhood, but now we are asking that it should converge to that solution. So, that is what we mean by asymptotic stability right. So, asymptotic stability and uh, normal stability uh, they differ by a little bit that means asymptotic stability should converge to the solution and uh, um, normal stability is that it should stay in the same vicinity or in the same neighborhood. Here also you can write a stronger version um, for this uh, stability would be to um, so let, let me just show the calculation. So, for explicitly what we are saying that for x for clarity uh, for clarity um, we explicitly mention we explicitly uh, setly mention uh, the meaning of the uh, of the uh, definition of the definition um, that is of the definition. So, basically uh, for each epsilon positive arbitrary small there exists a capital T if you go by epsilon delta definition uh, capital T uh, which is uh, there ex let me write in words uh, not the symbol uh, there exists uh, for each epsilon positive there exists uh, a capital T which is a function of epsilon and a T1 such that such that norm of y t minus x t even if you take the mod it does not matter because this value is 0. So, mod of this minus 0. So, it will remain like this is less than epsilon whenever whenever t is greater or equal to uh, t 1 plus uh, capital T of epsilon comma t 
one right and uh, if you put this into the perspective of this and uh, similarly if you want to have a uh, uniform asymptotic stability then basically we take uh, this capital t as the supremum of uh, as the uh, supremum of all such uh, t1 so basically if we take capital t uh, which is a function of uh, epsilon only as a supremum over all t1 get rho equal to t0 uh, t of epsilon comma t1 then in that case for such t uh, if this definition holds then we call it as uniformly uh, asymptotically st uniformly asymptotically stable or um, I mean uh, you can say uniformly stable also so that that's fine. Um, uh, but yeah, I mean, our correct terminology will be uh, uniformly, then this will lead to uniformly asymptotically. Of course, it is uniformly stable, but uniformly asymptotically stable solution, right? Stable solution. And uh, the solution, the fourth definition is, uh, uh, fourth definition is, uh, the solution uh, x of 1 is called unstable if it is not stable or Lyapunov stable. Lyapunov stable. Obviously, uh, when it is not stable, then it is unstable. If it is stable, then you have to define that definition. So, these are some definitions, terminologies that I wanted to uh, let you know and uh, probably in the next class, we will discuss some results, some theorems, uh, if possible, maybe one example to make you understand what do we actually mean by these different terminologies and we will continue our discussion on um, uh, stability further because this is actually a very heavy chapter and uh, from there I am trying to extract vital information and give it to you. So, uh, please uh, bear with me. And there will be a lot of term, uh, definition, uh, there will be some more uh, definitions, uh, maybe some results that I will share in the uh, upcoming classes. So, thank you for your attention. I will see you in the next class.